Mario Kart. Where do I begin to describe this series to you guys? There are over 8 installments on consoles, whether home or mobile, and then we are fortunate enough to have Mario Kart in arcades featuring characters like Pac-Man and the ghosts, um, Inky, Blinky, and Clyde, all of them. Pretty freaking cool, it's a lot of Mario Kart for people to enjoy. Beginning back on the Super Nintendo, this franchise has grown to be a staple for Nintendo. With the insanity, the, creative, the creativeness of the tracks, the wonderful music, this atmosphere that we can be dis delivered to, the amount of characters you can use, the type of formats, especially with Mario Kart Double Dash, which arguably has the most unique features in the Mario Kart series, is a lot to talk about. Today, we are going to begin a new series in that Hot Top 5, where I will be listing for you my top 5 tracks in Super Mario Kart and Mario Kart 64, Mario Super Circuit, all the way up to Mario Kart 8. And then it's going to end with my top 5 tracks of the entire series. Put your seatbelts on, make sure your helmet is secure, and get ready. Welcome to number 5 of my top 5 favorite tracks in Super Mario Kart. Number 5 goes to Donut Plains 2. Please excuse the gameplay you see with Yoshi. I'm sorry, it has been a very long time since I played Super Mario Kart. But anyway, the reason why I chose Donut Plains 2 is because when I think of Donut Plains, this is the track that I always think of. And this is the track that I wish they would have taken into consideration when bringing the track over into Mario Kart 8. This track is a lot of fun mainly because of the, ma the Monty Moe's that just pop up wherever and whenever. The track is very thin, um, apart from a few turns that you can actually see on screen. Um, otherwise, it's a very thin track, and I think that it still, it still just works, you know? It's one of those tracks where I really enjoyed it, and not to mention the music of it, and then, like I said, and especially in the Mario Kart Wii Custom track, I enjoy a track where I actually feel like I am thinking, even when I'm on a straightaway. And always having to dip by when I'm going to turn next just makes it feel nice. So, Donut Plains was based off of Super Mario World. And for those of you guys who don't know, actually, a lot of the courses in Super Mario Kart are based on Super Mario World. But then again, that Mario didn't have many games to base tracks off of. You know what? I'm getting too much into lore and whatnot. But still, Donut Plains 2 goes to number 5. Number 4 goes to Mario Circuit 4. Wait. Um. I have to state that I didn't pick it to be in this place just because of the number. This is one of those times where it just kind of awkwardly fit there. I didn't even think about that until just now when I said it. But anyway, Mario Circuit 4 is a great track for the same reason why I like Donut Plains 2. The thin rose makes it set where you need to be precise with your turning. And then you also have the warp pipes that just litter the field and kind of gets in your way. And if you're smart enough, or if you're precise enough, I'll say, you can get between the pipes and take a shorter turn than anybody else who's not proficient enough. And then it's also a risk-reward thing because if you manage to get caught, well, you get stopped immediately and you're caught on a pipe. So then you got pushed back to the back or whatnot. So, I don't know. I really do like Mario Circuit 4. I don't think I can see this one returning because, in all honesty, it is kind of a plain track you can, when you compare it to everything else. But then again, GBA Mario Circuit 2 did did come back and came back kind of spectacularly. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe we can see some um, Nintendo can work their magic and bring this one back. But until then, it will reside in Super Mario Kart at number four. Now this one is probably a little biased, but still. Number three goes to Mario Circuit 2 from the Mushroom Cup. The main reason why I like this course, well, let me not get into that just quite yet. The actual course itself is really simple, it's in the Mushroom Cup, it's the final track of it, and it actually doesn't feature anything that Mario Circuit 3 or 4 has. Um, not much, not very really winding, the road is pretty wide. Um, you do have a couple pipes in the way, but it's very few, very few, just to get you in the, you know, get you used to pipes in the road. You have coins literally, literally all over the track, and you have many straight areas that you can just like go for and get your drift on. The main reason why Mario Circuit 2, Mario Circuit 2, a track that I deem pretty plain, goes up to number three, is the jump that happens before the last turn in the track. I love this jump so much, and I don't know why. But every time I think of Mario Circuit from SNES, this is the stage that I think of first, and it's all because of that jump. That jump is gorgeous. I love it. 
and I want more jumps. Can we get more jumps? Hashtag more jumps. Hashtag more jumps. But that's the main reason why it jumps up for, for me uh, to three for me. It's just a fun track, and I love that jump so much. Number two goes to Bowser Castle three from the Star Cup. Now this one, well. You guys are probably going to hate me for this one, but the reason why I chose this for number two is because of how evil I deemed this track to be. Now, let me explain. First off, thwops are everywhere. Thwops are everywhere. And there's even a section after the whole jump panel thing where there are four thwops, and all four of them can be down at one time. What this means is that anybody who comes up at that moment will just be stopped. Now I'm sure there's some sort of um, symmetry for, uh, not symmetry, but um, some synergy to it, like a reason why they move as they do. But still, it's just like, God, you know? It's like, why are you doing that? Why can the entire road be blocked off by thwomps? And then directly after that turn, you have three different sections. And can I just say that drifting feels almost impossible in Super Mario Kart, at least for me? Um, so with that said, you can't tell which road you're going to go down, but it's really difficult. They're going to make an immediate turn right afterwards, and guess what's right there? More thwomps to impede your progress. Not to mention just the thwomps and whatnot that are everywhere on this track, but there are jumps, and I mean jumps on jumps. And if your jumps are not precise, guess where you're falling? Into lava. It's a very evil track, but that's why I really do enjoy it. Um, more so than a Bowser Castle that's always seen, where it's like, is that one road that, you know, doesn't lead to anything? I think that's Bowser Castle 2. I don't know why that one's there, but, you know, when it comes to evil tracks, none is more evil in Super Mario Kart than Bowser Castle 3, in my opinion. And number one is revealed to be Chaco Island 2. Uh, what can I say about Chaco Island 2? Oh, yeah! The fact that it is the bane of my childhood existence. This track, my friend beat me almost every single time. And I'm just like, why are you so good on this track? This track is almost impossible to me. It really is, but that's the reason why I love it so much. Because it has put me in such a... Uh, was it just... It put me behind, and I put so much practice on this specific track to try and learn it. And no, I still don't have it. I still don't have it. There's a very thin road after the second turn that you have to travel down and then make an immediate right turn where you're walking through a mud puddle that is littered with piranha plants. Why is this here? And then you're making another right turn and then you have all these little, I guess, divots in the road that cause you to jump and stop you from actually moving. So that means you have to know where you want to go before you hit a jump. And then once you're in the air, you just got to hope that everything works out fine. It's it's infuriating. It's infuriating, but still, I love this chord just because of the memories that it has with me. I have laughed so many times on this one. Just, I mean, it's frustrating to laugh, but it's laughing. I had a good time on this course, and that's why it goes to number one. The memories and the time that you will have on this course will be unmatched by any other track in Super Mario Kart. I guarantee it. So there you have it. In my opinion, I'm actually really glad we got Super Mario Kart out the way because here on out, we are guaranteed for an amazing top five list from over seven Mario Kart games. That's right, I said over seven more, but I'm not gonna tell you anything I have in store. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button for me. Help the video to exceed 500 likes, and make sure you guys stay tuned for the next installment of the Hot Top Five, where I'm going to be listing my top five tracks in Mario Kart. 64 and I can already tell you Mario Kart 64 is one of my favorite Mario Karts. The hype in that video is bound to blow your mind. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to make sure you guys stay tuned for all daily content and of course, of course, thank you for checking out the video. Stay hot guys and I will see y'all next time.